thank you all. This has been a really fantastic afternoon echoing David. It's really just a delight to see people in person and have these conversations again. Um, I want to draw out a couple of themes of the day as we sort of kick off our brief opening dialogue, but let me introduce my uh, my fellow panelists here. I want to say hi, and just let people know who you are and why you're here. Hi, everyone. My name is Sahar. Uh, with Jeff, I'm the co-founder of the Integrity Institute. That's our logo. Uh, yeah, yeah, hooray. We're such babies. We're such a tiny baby organization, but we're very cool. Um, and uh, I don't know, is that it? Yeah, that's enough. We'll get into Great. more. I'd love to draw out a few of the themes that I sort of heard percolating throughout the conversations on the day to day. There are a lot of hard problems in the space of content and governance online, including deep challenges to trust uh, in, in many different ways and across many different sectors that we're working to address. There are a lot of trade offs in this problem space. There are no perfect solutions. Positivity is there, and some progress is really being made. Um, I really liked this vision that we had at the end of the government panel that I think Peter started to articulate um, with, with Camilla and others, where we have this sort of layer of high level internationally agreed upon principles in the process of being development developed. Um, hopefully compatible regulatory frameworks uh, coming in at the layer below that. And then all of these processes working out the details, investing in accountability and participation at the practical level. And the final theme that I wasn't necessarily expecting to come up today, but really I heard it loud and clear, is the theme of experimentation. Experimentation within government processes, within business. Now, if you remember your scientific method, um, there's a hypothesis, we test the hypothesis, we measure what happened and we evaluate it at the end of the day. Companies experiment all the time. I'm gonna hand it back over to you, Sahar, and say, how do you think about the company experiments? And, and especially, how can we measure results in that context? And how is the Integrity Institute working on that? Wow, what an unexpected question, Chris. Uh, uh, some throat clearing. Uh, I'm speaking for myself. The Integrity Institute is a bunch of cool integrity workers and professionals who all have different opinions. I'm just speaking about mine. Uh, shout out to everyone on the live stream. Uh, so, I completely forgot my prepared remarks. So I guess I'll have to wing it. Uh, so it's really interesting to me how uh, experimentation happens in companies and also how, that, how the world has slowly caught on to thinking about it. So back in the day, when you hear arguments around this kind of stuff, people would call it content moderation, the arguments about censorship, and mostly people were thinking about, you know, underpaid people thumbs upping or thumbs down in content. And then lately we've seen uh, an upgrading to people talking about algorithms, uh, which is a term I hate because, you know, everything's an algorithm, addition's an algorithm. Uh, but, um, you know, ranking feeds and, and understanding the incentives and how those are set up. And so, uh, companies have these feeds and they have to understand how they work themselves. And when people make changes to these feeds, uh, how are they evaluated? Uh, some set of engineers, data scientists, et cetera, make a change, show it to some millions number of people in an A-B test, see the results in metrics. And then based on those metrics, they decide whether or not to ship the feature to everyone. Um, that's really important. Those metrics are the skeleton key to understanding the entire company. Uh, platform changes that aren't algorithmic also go through the same metrics, make a tweak, I don't know, make Twitter red as opposed to blue, whatever you want, um, measure the change in these metrics. Uh, you can think of the entire company as a black box that is just optimizing for those you know, top 10 metrics or whatever it is. Um, and if you really wanted to make change, I think what you'd want to do is look at those metrics and make sure the companies are choosing the right ones. And um, earlier today, uh, in the first panel, people talked about the three sort of levels of, of abstraction, you could say. Uh, and I want to tell you the parable of the plumber. And I think only a few of you have heard it. Uh, so my job at Facebook uh, was to be an integrity professional uh, with code though integrity professionals have many different kinds of skills. And uh, I felt like a plumber. The sink was broken. Uh, I knew how to fix the sink. I wasn't allowed to fix the sink. Uh, people had really big conferences 
uh, where, where people flew in all over the world to talk about the broken sink. Uh, you know, my bosses went on stage talking about, we really want to fix the sink. Uh, people, you know, said, I have a PhD in, you know, uh, metallurgy or water. Uh, I know how the sink works. Uh, and, and, you know, some of these ideas were good. Uh, but like, to me, the real problem was I was not allowed to fix the sink. Uh, and that gets the details. Like I could spend as a plumber, two years teaching people, you know, all the different tools you could use to fix different kinds of sinks. And uh, when we talk to, to people at the Institute, they ask us, what about the share button? Uh, is it good? Should we get rid of it? I mean, I think you should get rid of it. But um, uh, all these questions are very context dependent. All these sorts of solutions have people who know how to fix them. And, and the question to, to me is, why aren't we allowed to fix them? And there's some good good reasons, and there's some bad reasons, and um, tying those two things together, uh, I think one of the reasons is organizational design. Uh, imagine if my people were allowed to do the right thing, and often you know we were allowed to to make changes that helped people on the platform, and uh, the problem is everyone else in in the company wants to make those metrics go up, right? And let's just say those metrics are growth. Uh, in a company that is heavily optimized with lots of employees, every other employee wants to make growth go up. And if you make a change that is not trying to optimize growth, uh, you're probably hurting growth. And if you make a change that hurts growth, everyone else in the company is incentivized to undo it. Um, they don't necessarily know they're doing it. Uh, but it'll happen. And so, so again, a focus on the details, you know, uh, the Integrity Institute can provide those details, please set us up. Uh, we have a website. Um, but um, my thoughts a lot are on that structure and those metrics, because that's where the organizational design lies. And I have a question for you. Uh, so uh, I submit to you that integrity workers know how to solve the problem, but they aren't given the power to. Part of it is being a cost center as opposed to uh, you know the big swinging uh, macho people at the center of the company. And I don't know how to fix that, like from a policy point of view. Like how do you, from a policy point of view, like tell companies, you know, take this part of your company more seriously or give them an equal seat at the table? Uh, I don't know, that's really hard. It, it is very hard. Of course, I have all of the answers. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have the answers to that. Um, I, uh, I heard a really interesting theme from the prior panel about the sort of changing, I think it was from Jason, but forgive me if it was someone else, uh, the changing vertical within companies now and how there's sort of a, of, a, of a parallel process to growth into other factors that are typically included in corporate success met metrics um, along the lines of impact or measuring externalities for the broader world around you. I think that's a really interesting conversation that's starting to brew and I'm definitely interested in following that and seeing where it goes and encouraging those conversations. So it might've been Matt, I see him nodding. Uh, I know he has certain thoughts about these topics as well. Um, but we can't ignore the role of evolving regulation and legislation in the space as well, right? Governments are coming in, I think, in large part to set up changes in the incentives facing companies to put more of a thumb on the scale of investing in integrity. Um, I think that that is in, in many ways welcome, in many ways complicated, right? This is a very complex system. Nevertheless, the laws are moving forward. The Digital Services Act or the DSA is in all likelihood going to be signed into law next quarter and to take effect in January. The online safety bill in the UK is very, very far along as well. And at some point, maybe we'll do something in this country. Uh, I put out a paper with our street last November, which was my take on the content regulatory legal framework in the United States. And a central piece of that thesis was something that I like to call the critical community. Forgive me for the term, I, I, it's, a, it's a shorthand, um, but it's meant to describe all of these forces that we're talking about today, all of the forces represented in this room and on these panels, the ecosystem that has evolved and grown around platforms to work with them, sometimes against them, sometimes with them, to help them see this sort of broader environment of consequences and so forth. And I'm really like interested in, in seeing how we can continue to invest in this alongside regulation. Now, the DSA and the online safety bill, as I think was mentioned briefly in this panel, have some uh, pieces built into them to make space for multi-stakeholders. I certainly hope to see US law as it continues to develop, making space for this kind of 
engagement with the critical community as well. Um, and I think there's a theme that we could look to as a way of doing this. So we're all sitting around here talking, we, we have to figure out what to actually build. In the regulatory context, I would like to see us approach this uh, aspirational goal of compatibility within regulatory frameworks by building in a degree of modularity within the laws as we develop them. Build the principles, build the construction, build the enforcement mechanisms in ways appropriate to the legal and constitutional frameworks of the region, but build them with substitutable pieces, modules, if you will, that help us define the thresholds, the implementation standards that we need to reach. How do we get to shared research or data access, right? The laws that get there will be different in the US, the UK, and in the EU, but the standards don't need to be. The standards for vetting researchers, the kinds of things that they should get access to, don't need to be different. They can be done with a smart approach and a modular framework for legislative design. And that also is our hook to bring all of these voices back in, to set up intentional processes where we can talk about how to develop these things and how to keep them evolving alongside the evolution of the internet. Um, that was me finally stepping off my soapbox. You've now heard everything I have to say. So, Har, do you have any other thoughts or should we uh, recognize that we're standing between people and the reception for those uh, kind enough to join us in person? Wow, that's a lot of pressure to uh, be silent. Um, two really quick thoughts. Um, maybe three, we'll see. Uh, the first is like, in the last panel, they talked about giving credit where it's due. I think that's incredibly important. And just as we can think of companies as systems that have overarching incentives and a bunch of people sort of trying to build out those incentives, so too we can think about the ecosystem that we're in, the critical community, and building the right incentives into that ecosystem. Um, and one of the things that I'm really excited to talk about at the Institute when we talk to companies is um, when you're doing the right thing, like let us know and you know, we'll be the honest brokers who will let people know that you are doing the right thing. And um, I don't know, maybe because I'm addicted to positivity, but I'm very excited about that. And I think that that's, that's it's good that people do that too. Um, the second quick thought I had was that you're all very lovely people. And um, what a delight it was to have you here for so many hours, um, that what a marathon session it was um let's all be friends and um uh i just want to thank you chris uh i think we said this before but like chris did from my perspective all the work um of making this happen and uh it it wouldn't have happened without him and i'm in awe of his and addison maybe i forgot her name uh their uh event planning and management skills thank you so much hey, thank you thank you all and i will say the standard for internet governance events is multi-day conversation so a half day is nothing trust me thank you all let's have another round of applause for all of our fantastic speakers thank you sahar and let's go chat over drinks